So a lot of times, you know, we're excited to get out here. You know, we want to drill a bunch of holes and we want to move around and find fish. And, you know, early ice isn't always easy. I mean, sometimes you have to put in the work. And I think probably the mistake that I make at times is, if anything, it's really easy to get too aggressive. And what I mean by that is, you know, drill, you know, lots and lots of holes. The thing to remember is that early on, these fish can be really spooky. I mean, right now we're on three inches of ice. And it seems like every time you make a move, every time you hit the, the spud bar, every time you drill, is you're, you're just pushing these fish around. What I find is that early ice, don't be afraid to slow down, get more methodical, spend more time in spots. You know, instead of having the mentality where you're gonna drill 200 holes, you're just gonna tear the ice up. Think of it as, okay, I'm gonna fish five or six spots today. I'm just gonna drill a couple of holes and run traffic. And so that's the whole key is, Instead of drilling out an area and drilling 50 holes and bouncing around, don't be afraid to drill one or two holes and just give a little bit more time to let those fish come underneath you. Especially with these perks, it's just a strategy that works so well at early ice. Yes, perfect eaters. It's fun to come out here at early ice and just get a fresh meal of fish. We're out on the North Dakota potholes and we're just on a lake here where just lots of I don't know maybe eight to eleven inch perch a few walleyes mixed in but uh tell you what I'm hungry for fish it's been a while and I think that's for a lot of people you know I mean there's kind of that kind of that time where you know you can't put a boat in the water anymore and you can't quite get out ice fishing and so you know you, you go a little while without fishing and so a lot of people are excited about coming out early ice and I want to just go over a few safety tips because, you know, everybody's excited. Everybody wants to get out there. But at the same time, you know, the old saying that no fish is worth your life. And I think sometimes, too, even with social media and stuff where, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, I think people make it a contest where it's almost like a contest who can get out there first. It isn't a contest. We're going to have plenty of winter. I mean, it's middle of November right now. We're going to have a long ice fishing season. And so there's no sense in taking any chances. But I want to just go over some safety tips because I think it's important, especially for a lot of new anglers or young anglers that, you know, maybe, uh, you know, don't know or understand some of the consequences. Now, the biggest thing is, you know, float suits, life jackets, you know, that's for after you fall in. But if there's two pieces of equipment that are going to help you out a lot to keep you from falling or keep you from getting hurt, first off, make sure you have a good pair of ice cleats. I'm just wearing the corkers boots where they've got the interchangeable cleats built right into the sole okay but make sure that you have ice cleats because the reality is that way more people get hurt on the ice by slipping and falling than they do falling through okay so ice cleats at early ice this ice can be so slick it can be so slippery make sure that you have ice cleats the other thing is make sure that you have a spud bar i'm gonna get my spud bar i'm gonna show you how i use it but the spud bar is going to keep you on safe ice in the sense that if you are walking and you get to a to a patch of ice or to an area where there's less ice, spud bar is gonna let you know. And so spud bar and ice cleats, number one, number two pieces of equipment that you have to have to keep safe. The other things is make sure you have a throw rope. I'll show you my throw rope here. Throw rope's pretty self-explanatory, just, just coiled up in there where you, know, if you need to help somebody. And then obviously your ice picks, which you can just wear right around your neck. And, you know, that's if you fall in, you know, as far as pulling yourself back out. But the whole key, the whole goal is never to fall in. You know, so when you're on early ice, you know, right now we're walking out on three inches of ice, which that can vary. I mean, I've seen instances where four inches of ice probably wasn't enough to walk on, especially if you have real alkali water. But uh, if you have good, hard, clear ice, typically you want at least three inches of ice to walk on and, you know, five, six inches of ice for any type of a machine in a foot of ice if you're driving a vehicle, you know, and that's uh, the bare minimum, you know, and so right now we're on three inches of ice, it's good hard ice, but well, I'm gonna show you something here, when you're walking with these spud bars, they just take a nice good hard whack, okay? When you take one good hard whack, that's gonna drop that spud bar about an inch into the ice. So when you pull up, if water comes up out of that chip that you made with the spud bar, you're on, you're, you need more ice, you need to back off, you need to back up where you came, okay? So I'm gonna take another hit. Right there, about three good whacks, three inches, okay? And so that's how you tell the depth of the ice when you're walking with a spud bar. So one, two, three inches, 
And so it's going to take about three good hard chops in one spot with a spud bar. And so spud bar is probably one of the most important tools that you need when you're walking out and you're dealing with less than three, four inches of ice because I tell you what, there's no room for air in the sense that you could have three inches of ice, but if you get in an area where maybe there's a culvert or maybe there's some current, there might be less ice. Maybe you're in an area where the wind kept the lake open for a little longer, or maybe there's Canada geese sitting out here in one spot where you know you just have you know a patch of ice that's just a lot less than everything around it. And so you definitely want to be diligent. I think one thing that I see happen a lot at early ice, which I just scratch my head, is you'll see some people that are out on the ice and they had the safety equipment and they had a spud bar and they picked their way out and you know they're out there fishing and people see other people out on the ice and they just drive right out to them never check the ice once they just assume since they see somebody else fishing that it's just safe all over the lake and tell you what that can get you in a lot of trouble and so make sure you have fun but make sure you stay safe